everyone so I'm refilming the intro to this video because I lost the first one but anyways this is just a video of me reading through my math IBSL internal assessment for this assessment I got 20 out of 20 which is like a level 7 and you can't really get any higher than that so yeah just saying that this is just a video for anyone who needs inspiration for their math IBSL assignment and for newspeak people I'm not sure um, it's also SL by the way so it's not studies it's not HL it's SL so that's like the level at which I'm working at also um, for anyone who's like super struggling with the IA and can't find a topic you can like use my IA's inspiration if you want you can honestly do the same method as me but pick a few different islands to do I'm not gonna explain the details of this IA and how to actually do it and the mathematics and theory behind it in this video but what I will do is I will link the videos to which I got the information from so if you want to learn more and you want to understand like the details of what I'm talking about when I'm going through my IA you can uh, look at these two videos they were really amazing the first one is where I found the inspiration from and then the second one is just where I found the method for my IA those two videos just made up my IA without those two videos I couldn't have done my IA and I basically just took stuff from those videos and like turned it into my IA basically also just a quick note not all IAs are the same this is not a set defined expectation by the IB or anything there are so many different types of IB math SL IAs this is just one example of many but it's totally fine to just do something normal and you can still get the same amount of marks I just like happened to discover this and I was like really interested and passionate about it so like I was able to like do something that I really liked and enjoyed yeah so overall I was really proud of my IA and I really liked my IA in the end and so I hope this gives you inspiration for your IA. If you have any questions about your IA or about the IA or anything at all just like write in the comments and I'll make sure to respond. So yeah let's move on to the video. Okay so first tip um don't use a cover page it is a waste of pages and it is completely unnecessary. So I just have the title of my IA here investigating the coastline paradox you don't have to make it a question but you could um, I don't know I just didn't because some of them aren't questions so it's just like you can make it a question you want I just did it and then in the first paragraph is I have my introduction now if you notice how I've organized it I've organized it um, using numbers and I don't have a table of context but that's kind of unnecessary so I'll have one for like a section and then I'll have like two when I start a new section and then 2.1 when I do sections within sections and I bold and underline and I bold and underline those titles as you can see because I just think that makes it kind of stand out and stuff yeah so in the introduction you want to give some background which eventually leads you into asking some sort of question or whatever or kind of just like initiating why you wanted to do this IA what made you do it, some background, and yeah, that kind of stuff. And then in the second part, uh, this is where I start to delve in into what the coastline paradox is. So if you don't know what it is, this is just me explaining the background. So this is still background knowledge because the coastline paradox is not like something in the IB syllabus or whatever. It's new types of maths, which it's not complicated. It's just like, it's just not in the syllabus. So it's not like I mean, I can't assume that the person I'm reading knows what coastline paradox is. So in here, I'm just explaining what that is. I've got this quote by Mandelbrot, which sh like defines what the coastline paradox is, so they know I'm not just making it up. Um, if you notice here, I've got I use uh, this is the so sort of referencing that I use. So for example, all of my references are at the bottom here, and I just numbered them all. One, two, three, four, five, and whenever whenever I'm using reference one, I'll put in brackets one where I've used it, and like I find that just like a simple, easy way to reference. I footnotes is confusing, so and also there's nothing in the IB um, guidelines that says you need to reference in a particular way. You just need to be consistent, and yeah, so that's just how I reference. As you teach you how you should reference, but if you have no idea, then you can use that way. It's pretty straightforward. Then after my uh, introduction of what the coastline paradox is, I have the aim of my IA, which is to investigate the concept of fractional dimensions and then to later uh, find the fractional dimensions of Indonesian islands. So I decided it was kind of like I couldn't just find the fractional dimensions of Indonesian islands. I needed to kind of investigate like the coastline paradox a little bit. So as you can see in the next part of my IAs, I kind of just go through like the theory behind it by using examples from that I created 
So this is still just background information. So if you're gonna do if you're gonna do something that's really straightforward and doesn't really have much background information, then you don't really need to go into all this kind of stuff that I'm going into. But because it's kind of like a new like creative thing that I just found online, I have to. So yeah. So if you find something cool and interesting um, that you want to use for your math IA, like spend a bit of time, spend a page or two, just like going through the theory and kind of explain and show the idea that you know what you're talking about, you know. So after I've announced the aim, I go into investigating the coast the concept of fractal dimension. Well, I've been saying fract fractional dimension, it's fractal dimension, I'm sorry. This is all just background basically. I'm looking at the complexity of Bali's coastline, basically explaining the coastline paradox, but in reference to an example, which I give here is Bali. So I show how like when you zoom in, like the complexity of it seems to appear the same no matter how far you zoom in, which is part of the um, coastline paradox. And then I kind of explain why that is so, and why like you, the Euclidean geometrical way of trying to uh, understand the circumference of a coastline by measuring it with a simple ruler doesn't work. As you can see for all the pictures that I have, I have a label of the picture and what it is. That's That gets marks for communication, I'm pretty sure, because they, the IB likes to see that you label stuff so that like it's kind of clear. Uh, communication and it also allows you if you label it figure one that means when you're talking about it in your IA you can say stuff like oh according to figure one blah 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 rather than like saying oh according to this picture up above here or whatever so yeah that's just a tip so after that I go into what is a fractal dimension which is me introducing the number that I'm trying to find in my IA so uh, over here I've got another picture and I've got a label again and I'm not gonna go into this now because this is like basically just straight up copying from like online resources just me rewording it into my own words explaining the theory and explaining the equation that Mandelbot created so Mandelbot said that uh, the fractal dimension is this I'm not gonna go into what the fractal dimension is um, you can look research it for yourself if you really care but this is just me deriving the equation that I'm going to use and trying to explain it this is really important. So when you're doing your IA, if you have any equations that you're using, you're going to want to explain those equations in depth because that really shows your understanding of the mathematical concepts and shows that you know what you're talking about. And also you want to make sure that you define all of the um, variables that you're using in your equation. For example, in this equation, right, I've, I've defined, I've already defined every single variable in that equation. I'm showing the rearrangement of my equation to like show my understanding of the maths. And you can do this in Google Docs. Um, if you don't know how to write equations, there's a way to do it in Google Docs, which is pretty simple. If you just go into Google Docs, you click new equation, and then you can write equations that way. And the next part, I do an example. I work through an example of how to calculate the fractal dimension. So I calculate the fractal dimension of of Sapinski's triangle and then the cock snowflake. I'm doing this just to show my understanding and just to give more background as to what this theory of the fractal dimension actually is. If you're doing an IA in a different subject, this is essentially the same thing to me, just like going through more of the theory in a bit more detail because um, this is like kind of a new concept and that's why I'm like trying to explore it through maps. I'm not gonna go through it now. I essentially copied it from a video that I watched uh, and it's not copied, but it's like I, I took the inspiration from a video and decided to put it in here to show my understanding because it just like kind of explains more about the theory that I'm trying to show. So first I talked about the coastline paradox, then I talked about fractals. Now I'm talking about the connections between fractals and coastlines. Before I talked about the coastline paradox, right? And then I just talked about the fractal dimension and now but I talked about the fractal dimension in terms of like pure fractals, like the cock snowflake and stuff. Here I'm showing the connection between fractals and coastlines and how you can think of a coastline in terms of a fractal. So all of this, essentially what I've just talked about, is same, may seem really confusing and scary to you guys. This is just like the background theory to my IA, what the rest of my IA is going to stand on, you know what I mean? So if you're doing like something else, like, don't worry about how, like, complicated this may look. It's just background, essentially. That will be confusing to anyone who just hasn't read up or researched it before. So in this next section, what I'm going to do is, like, the more interesting part or the more, like, straightforward, like, part to it. What I'm doing is that I'm taking two methods to find the fractal dimension, and I'm testing both of these methods on Great Britain. Because Great Britain already has a defined fractal dimension of 1.25. And so basically, I'm taking these two methods and using them, on, using them by myself on Great Britain 
and then comparing which one gives me the more accurate result. And then from that, I'm going to take the more accurate uh, method and then use it to find two Indonesian islands. Now what this shows is that it shows personal engagement and it shows initiative and because per personal engagement is like four marks, that's quite a lot. And what it shows is that, uh, and it also shows that I'm being reflective. So this is where I get lots of my reflection points and evaluation points because I'm not just like doing something going straight forward. I'm like evaluating at the end which one is the best method to do this and then moving forward. You get me? So first, I'm doing the Hoth, the Hosford method, and you can do this by yourself if you want to. If you want to investigate this, it's actually not that difficult to do. It may seem confusing, but it's pretty straightforward if someone like explains it to you. So what it said is that in his paper, Mandelbrot, this Mandelbrot gave this equation, which is that L is equal to m g to the power of one minus d, where L is the length of the coastline, m is just some random proportionality concert, cons g is the length of the ruler that you're using to measure and then d is the fractal dimension and if you rearrange this equation you can actually you can get, get a y equals mx plus c equation and then you can and then and and then simply by just measuring putting rulers on the coastline of great britain and then measuring the length of the um of great britain depending on what kind of ruler size you use, you can find the fractal dimension of Great Britain. This is purely based off a method that I just followed and copied from YouTube. I'm not going to explain it super in depth here, but if you really want to know, you definitely can understand it. I just don't have time to explain it right now. Uh, so you can watch the video in the description that explains the method in more detail and makes it a lot more simple and to the point. So what I would do is that I put rulers all around the edges of Great Britain and then shrink the rulers and, as you, and then I would measure the length of the coastline by multiplying the length of the ruler by how many there are. And that essentially gives me the variables. L, which is the length of the coastline, which is like all of the rulers added up together. And D and G, which is the length of the ruler. And rearranging that gets me D, which is the fractal dimension. And if I do these a bunch of times, I did this four times, you can plot a Y equals MX plus C and find the gradient. And then the gradient is supposed to give you the fractal dimension of, of the thing. Yeah, that's really confusing and complicated, but I show you it's quite a simple method that you can use if you just follow the YouTube video in the description. Like, I just did this in Photoshop. Like, I just took some rulers, I put it all along the edges of Great Britain, and then I counted how many there are, and then I multiplied... Um, multiply how many rules are by the length of the ruler and then I just did that for a bunch of different sizes of rulers and then I got out I came out with the length I came out with the number of rulers I came out with the length of rulers and I took those did the log stuff plotted it and then I got my number which is 1.27 and then after that I evaluated how accurate this method was and I found that it was like actually quite accurate because uh, I got it quite close to Mandelbrot's actual value, which is 1.25. So I got 1.27, and Mandelbrot got 1.25. So that's actually pretty good. After this, I did I tried the box counting method. Here I have my equation for it. I have the variables here. I rearranged again to find a y, y equals mx plus c equation, and then I did the box box plotting, which is slightly different and what you essentially do is that you put Great Britain on a grid and then you select all the boxes that touch the coastline and then you count how many they are uh, compared to the size of the boxes. In this first one, right, I selected all the boxes of Great Britain and set that to zero and then I made them twice as small and then counted how many boxes there were and then I made them four times as small and counted how many boxes um, the coastline of Great Britain took up and then I made it eight times as small and counted how many boxes the coastline of Britain took up. It seems really complicated but I really just followed a method that I found online. It's not that, it's not that hard once you get into it. And then I just plotted that according to the equation and found the gradient and then calculated the factor dimension which turned out to be 1.376 and then I evaluated that as well and I and I compared it to the old one and I decided to not use the box counting method because it wasn't as accurate as the Hostev method so the point of this is to show reflection and evaluation I ran into a problem I didn't know which one to use so I tried both and then after I tried both, and then after I tried both, I decided that one was better than the other, so I used the better option, which shows reflection, evaluation, personal engagement, all that kind of stuff. Then I used this method to determine the fractal dimension of two Indonesian islands. Uh, I did the Hostel method for Sulawesi. 
and found it to be 1.09 and then I also did it for West Nusa Tenggara which is more complicated and I found it to be 1.18 which makes sense because as you can see West Nusa Tenggara is a lot more complicated than Sulawesi. After that I just d discussed and concluded so I just gave a table I'm sorry if there's knocking in the background. So I just gave a table which gave the fractal dimension and then the percentage error and the and the absolute errors. I found an error of 1.6 because that is the error that I found when like I got 1.27 but I was supposed to get 1.2 1.25 and that comes out to an error of 1.6. I I just took that percentage error and used that as my error for the Indonesian islands and then just found a maximum and min value to say that like yeah it's not it's probably not exactly what I found it to be but it's probably be between these two numbers so that's why I have the maximum and the minimum here. Then I just do the basic discussion and conclusion stuff where I talk about the problems with my IA, the issues, why it's not perfect, why I didn't get the exact amount. But then especially at the end I talked about what I could do better, I talked a little bit about why I did this IA, why I find it interesting, and then in the end I gave a whole paragraph that showed how uh, fractal dimensions can be used in other scientific domains, so not just mathematics just for fun, but also for like cancer cells and all kinds of stuff. So I showed like different applications of the fractal dimension to give my IA relevance and to show why it's important. So that basically wraps it up. That's my IA. I really like this IA. I thought it was quite interesting. I was really proud of it at the end. But just so you know, like if this freaks you out for some reason, because I'm pretty sure it would have freaked me out if I had seen this at the start. Um, all IAs are different. Not all of them are creative. A lot of them are pretty like straightforward and boring and that's okay. It's like find something that interests you, find something that like you are willing to put effort in because this is 20% of your grade. And if you do badly in your exams, the IA is something that you can use to pick up more points, which I hope for me because um, I did not do amazingly in my exams. So I'm hoping that my IA, uh, having 20 out of 20 in my IA will bring my grade up a bit. Um, but also I would like to say that don't worry too much about your IA. It does doesn't have to be perfect but try to make it as good as it can be but like at the end of the day your eye is only worth 20 percent and your exams are worth 80 percent so if anything just use the IA to practice your mathematical skills for the final exam that 80 percent is what is really important I wish you guys luck with your IAs I hope this gave you an example of what you could do for your IA you, you can honestly just like do a similar thing to what I did but then just use a different island or whatever I'm, I'm okay with that because if you were to copy mine if you're just copy and paste it then you're gonna get caught for plagiarism and that's kind of your own fault so if you have any questions or anything about IAs, math IAs, if you want help with yours you can message me you can email me uh, leave a comment if this was helpful and watch my video on how to do a math IA if you're still confused and I'll see you later thank you